This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now. Welcome everyone to this week's BMF Podcast. I'm your host, Dow James, and my next guest is a fiction and non-fiction author, screenplay writer and mentor, passionate about encouraging others to write and create change. Welcome Winnie Alexander to the Business Marketing Finance Podcast. Hi, hello, hi, thanks for having me. Great to have you on the show, Winnie. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey, what it was like growing up, and how you made the turning point to be the woman who you are today? Right, okay. Um, well, I've always been literally a creative person when it comes to writing and just in kind of practically as well. I've always been a very creative person. Mm -hmm. So um, I found that I had a passion for writing um, when I was at school. Yeah. So in my last couple of years at school, I just was always top of the class for English, drama, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of developed a passion for writing short stories. Yeah. And also plays at school. Um, I also wrote plays for like, you know, the sixth form and the, the higher years above me. Uh -huh. um, it, it was just something that came naturally. And obviously teachers and other people around me kind of noticed that I had a gift, that I had a talent for it. Yeah. Um, and usually my mates would be down the park or out riding their bikes, etc., And yeah. I would be in my room literally writing. Because oh, wow. it's just something I love to do. Yeah. I yeah. love to find inspirational places to write. I used to go and sit by the river. Because where I'm from, um, I literally grew up in a very small town called Burton-on-Trent. Not sure if you've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's literally a little country town. So there's lots oh. of little places to go and hide in the country, like in the yeah. park, by the river, etc. Mm -hmm. And I just was always kind of doing that basically and just writing and writing and writing yeah. my dad used to call me the dictionary because if you needed to know how a word was spelled it wow. would, you know Winnie how do you spell this like he would call because I knew how to literally spell every word yeah I wow. think when I was about six years old yeah. um I was my favorite book was my dad's dictionary I just used to go through it and just try and learn words oh, that's um cool. And then even just uh, a few months ago, um, my yeah. sister said, do you remember this book? And she gave me the dictionary and it had um, all my little scribbles in it from when mm -hmm. I was younger. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd learned to spell my name. Like, you know, I just used to just kind of write everything in that little dictionary. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I've just always loved writing. Um, it's always been a passion. I have been writing now um, for, let's see many years for well over well over 20 years now I think yeah. I wrote my, my first proper book mm -hmm. I wrote I was probably maybe about what 18 19 yeah, 20 yeah. before that I was just kind of writing short short stories um mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that's a little bit about me really Oh, cool. So you mentioned that you uh, you grew up in Burton on Trent. Um, I understand that you studied in Worcester as well as Birmingham. What made you change um, the location for study? Right. Okay. Well, I kind of took a shift um, mm -hmm. around the age of uh, 16. Um, like my mom and dad would be like, OK, so what do you want to do with your life? You yeah. know? Or like you don't want to just write you know writing is not going to pay the bills you need to find a career mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing um yeah. so my other passion was um hairdressing doing hair um mm -hmm. again a creative skill that I was good at yeah um, so I basically started to pursue a course in hair but I wanted to study like black hair and beauty and in Burton mm -hmm. at that particular time that college um there was only one college very small town and they didn't yeah. actually facilitate for um, black hair and beauty afro hair mm -hmm. so I did have older siblings that lived in Birmingham yeah so I basically moved to Birmingham and I pursued my course in hair and beauty mm -hmm. in Birmingham um and then I've literally kind of been in Birmingham ever since um back and forth I have moved around quite a bit um yeah, yeah. I also um did my degree in Birmingham, sociology mm -hmm. and psychology. Um, I took a shift from hair into kind of 
psychology because oh, wow. because I did own my own hair and beauty salon also. Oh wow! Okay, nice. But you nice. find that as the hairdresser, you become the counselor when everyone comes in with their issues and their problems. <laughs> yeah. That was inspiration for me to write, you know, yeah, um, yeah. And to learn about the world and things that people go through, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then I kind of thought, well, you know, I'm good at that. Let me kind of shift to the psychology side of things. So I did yeah. my degree in that, and then um, I decided to go on to uh, Worcester University for uh, the mentoring and coaching um, mm-hmm. in my masters. Yeah. Oh, nice, um, nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, a bit of a shift here and there, but in yeah. the back room. I was always a writer and I suppose that the advantage that I had was when it came to studying and doing essays and doing yeah. dissertations, the writing came very, very useful. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. So I see that you have a passion for mentoring. Do you get a sense of fulfillment in mentoring? What are some of the success stories that you've come across over your years of doing mentoring? Yeah, with uh, mentoring, um, it's more kind of, what I do was more like I started off kind of doing inspirational mentoring. I used yeah. to basically, the way that came about was when I left university, yeah. um, I kind of, uh, I kind of went into different volunteering roles. And one of those roles was um, as a support worker stroke mentor, um, yeah. working with vulnerable women. Okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically I started off by mentoring them and kind of, pulling them up off the ground literally basically mm-hmm. just trying to you know they're, they're ready to kind of start a new chapter in their life they've been yeah. through a traumatic time mm-hmm. and um yeah so basically they've been through a traumatic time um and they're ready to kind of start a new chapter yeah. so i would kind of give them the strength i suppose uh, mentoring them up um you know kind of practically and also mm-hmm. just kind of giving them that inspiration And, you know, delivering kind of motivational talks and also um, teaching them and kind of coaching and mentoring them in setting up their own business, that kind of thing, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of where the mentoring came in. Um, When I took that role on, um, my line manager, when she interviewed me, she says it is for mentoring, it is a mentoring role. Um, You'll be doing kind of support work as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just found that, when I was, uh, that again, mentoring is something that literally came naturally because I put these workshops together. I deliver like a, a motivational talk. Yeah, and yeah. I would only expect to have maybe two or three ladies in that group session. And by the time the session ended, mm-hmm. the room was full, you know, all yeah. my um, colleagues were in there as well. And they nice, all nice. were by what I had to offer. And it was just basically about, you know, kind of helping them to recognize their strengths as, as women and yeah. forward and kind of embracing their passion and their natural talent in life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, that's what I love to do. Um, and then obviously I kind of shifted again with the mentoring and then yeah. I went into uh, work to work. So I work in Birmingham university as a mm-hmm. academic mentor. Mm-hmm. And again, that was kind of, um, working with young students and a lot of the students were disabled as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're kind of like in their last year doing their degree yeah, and yeah. I would just kind of coach and mentor them into, um, you know, like employability skills and kind of how to start off their career. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what things to look out for, you know, don't mm-hmm. expect that you're going to finish your degree and just end up in, you know, a job next week that pays a hundred grand a year. It doesn't work like that basically. Yeah, yeah, holding their hand and taking them through the pro through the process and you know yeah. maybe getting them directed and set up with like employment agencies because yeah I mean at the moment I do uh, careers advising um, yeah. part-time so I kind of have some experience in the welfare to work sector that kind of thing yeah mm-hmm. and do you yourself have a mentor or have you had different mentors over the years um I haven't had um I can't put my finger on a specific mentor that I've had no um no, I have learned from people, from various people around me in the past, but I've not had a specific mentor that I can say has uh-huh. literally held my hand and, you know, yeah. kind of pulled me up. No, I haven't. No. Okay. Okay. You sound like you um, have a lot of uh, experience with that uh, when it comes to yeah. you know, supporting and people. I, yeah, I do feel with the mentoring and supporting people, that has something that has 
basically developed from my own life experiences. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I've kind of had to, you know, struggle a lot um, as a lone parent as well, a single parent, mm-hmm. and just kind of, you know, continue to kind of encourage and motivate myself and push myself through. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've just always been a determined person. I'm always mm-hmm. determined to get the job done. I don't mm-hmm. like to give up. And mm-hmm. I've always found good results and I've always been rewarded by that. That's and cool. I've yeah. always been commended for that because, you know, I can say that I've got, I've raised two children. Um, they're, well, one's 17. My son is 17. Fantastic. He's now studying business. Um, nice. He's also, um, he runs for Birchford Harriers. So he's a professional nice. athlete. Yeah. yeah. Um, my daughter, she's a, a newly qualified English teacher at secondary school, mm-hmm. um, teaching secondary kids. And mm-hmm. I've literally, you know, kind of, you know, had to raise them on my own. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like once uh, people and other women mainly kind of see you pushing through and they see kind of what your kids have come to. Mm-hmm. and. It's like, you know, well, I remember when he used to, she used to do hairdressing and those kids used to be in that shop, yeah, you know, yeah. till half 11 at night, like sleeping in the waiting room on those chairs. And she was working till all hours in the morning yeah, and she yeah. was by herself. And again, even though it was a struggle, people kind of bear witness to that struggle and mm-hmm. it's kind of, it motivates them. And yeah. you don't really realise that you've got people kind of, watching you from afar but yeah, yeah you know over the years people will you know come to me and say wow like you know you've done really well I remember like you was always on your own with those two kids yeah, you yeah. Know, and you you made it through so yeah, yeah I mean I just continue to push through and do what I do I mean like I say I love to help other people I love to inspire other people and also kind of help people to tap into their natural talents and their natural That's gifts it. and abilities yeah and yeah. No, and mine was was writing, and that's how I express myself yeah. through writing. And you know, if other people, you know, there may there's maybe I don't know music. You know, mm-hmm. embrace that, express your thoughts mm-hmm. um, through music. Um, yeah, I do believe that by embracing whatever talent it is that we have, that is kind of you know one of our literally ultimate goals in life. Yeah. You know, when you write your stories, um, do you write your stories with the young people in mind? Yes. Um, with young people in mind, I can say, right, OK, so we've got. We live in a crazy world, we're living in this crazy world and the, the children are literally our future. You know, mm-hmm. it's like time goes so quickly before you know it. These kids running around, you know, coming up yeah. to you, you we're yeah. going to be looking up to them. Mm-hmm. And we kind of need to, you know, instill in them some form of, you know, discipline and kind of like, you know, groom them and get them ready for, you know, wherever we're going to be in like 50 years time, etc. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm writing, um, what I tend to write about, especially with the uh, fictional stories, yeah. I try and focus on problems that we face in this world today. So mm-hmm. just like the the book that I've just written, um, mm-hmm. Alice Katz and the Mystical Journey. Yes. Um, basically that is looking at um, the big issue we have with trophy hunting and mm-hmm. the killing of wild animals and how they're becoming extinct and mm-hmm. people, you know, men are killing them, men and women are killing them just for a sport, for fun. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's destroying our planet because obviously I do believe that, you know, the wild animals, they're here for a reason. They help to balance out the planet and mm-hmm. we need them. It's part of, they're part of nature. Yeah. So that is a, is a situation that is, you know, it's very dear to my heart. So I thought I'm going to write about that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. would like my kids and other kids growing up to mm-hmm. recognise what's happening around them in this world mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, if they can try and do something about it, maybe we can't do anything about it in this generation, but they may be able to. Mm -hmm. So I try and get situations down on paper. And so what I did with that is I turned that into a fictional story. Mm -hmm. And um, I find like a solution to that issue in a fictional way to make it exciting to read. So uh, can I just kind of sift over what the... the Oh yeah, sure. 
uh, in a nutshell, it's basically about this young girl. Um, you know, she's in the early 20s. Again, she's young. She's not really sure about what she wants to do with her life. Um, mm-hmm. Everything that her parents kind of push her towards, she's not really interested in doing. Um, but she has kind of, she feels like she's going for a, spiritually, she's going for a change. Like different things are happening to her. She's decided to come vegetarian. She doesn't want to eat meat anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, she's making little changes in her life. And also strange things start to happen to her that are unexplained. Um, mm-hmm. Like she will have... Um, dreams about like helping animals and she's always had a passion for animals yeah. and then um basically she um is work is working in this grand museum and there's mm-hmm. lots of kind of old um pieces in there some old artifacts ancient pieces in there mm-hmm. and she has a fascination with a certain piece of um an egyptian deity called bastet mm-hmm. um and her two um felines that stand behind her so mm. the Egyptian goddess Bastet, she's like the Egyptian goddess of cats, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, um, Ali, the young girl in the story, has a fascination with this. And one night when she's walking home, she sees like a shooting star. Yeah. And the shooting star just happens to land in the alleyway near where she's walking. Mm. And as she decides to investigate, she kind of goes down this alleyway and she sees this little glowing light. looks like a little candle kind of burning. Yeah. She moves away all the rubble and all the cardboard um, and she finds two beautiful little kittens. Mm-hmm. Um, however, Ali doesn't know that these little kittens are just no ordinary kittens. Um, mm-hmm. So in a nutshell, who these kittens are, are obviously um, kittens that have been sent from another dimension um, by Bastet mm-hmm. uh, in the Egyptian era and their mission is to basically um, well they transform into these wild beasts like these um, yeah, yeah. You know, wild cats um, mm-hmm. that are very mystical, they're magical they have superpowers yeah. and their mission is to be with Ali and Ali is their guide in, the, in, the, in her era in the, yeah. this dimension and they basically go on a mission to destroy trophy hunting and save all the wild animals across the world. So oh, cool. they will basically be jumping through portals. Yeah. You know, Ali will be um, lying on a sofa with the kittens, with mm-hmm. the cats, and then they're basically called, um, they're called kind of telepathically um, mm-hmm. by their leader who was really Bastet, and she mm-hmm. basically pulls them into um, through this porthole and they will go to, they'll be in London. They're yeah. basically, and then they'll be called to like Africa or yeah. you know um, Zimbabwe, different parts of Africa, yeah, and they'll yeah. basically going out and just saving lions from being killed, elephants from being killed, yeah. and they're also kind of um, destroying and blowing up these uh, <laughs> hunters, yeah. and you know with their rifles, they're knocking yeah, yeah. them out, and um, they're also kind of healing. Um, animals that have been injured or shot. Um, mm. So yeah, with their magical gifts. Yeah. And it's a very heartwarming story. It's yeah, a very yeah. mystical story, but it gives hope for a situation that we're having to deal with in this world. So yeah. it's about when I work with young kids, I get them to kind of, you know, just express and, you know, use their imagination and, you know, give me like, you know, give me a situation that you're not happy about, you know, mm-hmm. what we're mm-hmm in this world right now someone mm. might say I don't know the war on terror or yeah. in Syria you know well you know talk to me about that if you was if you can imagine how you could mystically or magically solve that problem yeah, you know, yeah. what would you do put it yeah. on paper you know open up your imagination and yeah. obviously it's all fiction but it kind of gives them that drive and it instills in them a passion to actually go out and help our world and save our world and, you know, kind of strive for that world peace because ultimately that's what our aim should be, you know, yeah, world peace. Yeah. Um, so whether the issue is in politics, um, I've also got another story, story that I'm writing, sorry, um, mm. that focuses on um, our young, mainly our young black men mm-hmm. in America that are being gunned down day by day mm-hmm. by police out there. Um, Mm -hmm. again another situation very close to my heart I won't get into it too much but Mm -hmm. yeah I have another story that I'm writing around that situation and Mm -hmm. again 
I'm hoping that the young people will, you know, read that and kind of, you know, in their own way, because the young people coming up, you know, obviously they're a new generation. They will have new innovative ideas and fresh ideas, yeah. you know, that would probably think, you know, oh, I've never thought of that, you know, but mm-hmm. they're new, they're coming in with a new knowledge, you know, and a lot of them, we should really be learning from them because they're coming in with new gifts and yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we should really, so, you know, like home in on that and appreciate that, you know, because mm-hmm. I think um, our generation growing up, you know, we were kind of taught to like, you know, keep our mouth shut when adults were talking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, know your place, you know, it's not for you to say, you're just a child. Uh-huh. But I do believe with our generation and our young ones that we're bringing up, they do have a lot to offer when it comes to a new knowledge, you know, a new mind. Mm-hmm. It's like, I do feel that our children literally are our future. And I do feel that good change will be made in the future. Yeah. We've got this planet and I just feel we need to kind of nurture that in them and help them to kind of express it and bring it out more because we need them they're not you know we're not having children for no reason there's a reason for them coming through and being so talented and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of they they have a lot to offer so I basically my goal is working with young kids in writing is to kind of bring that out in them you know yeah yeah Yeah. now you self-publish all your books though right is that correct yeah, so at the moment I've decided to self-publish um, on Amazon. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that, at the moment. Is, is that the only platform that you currently sell your books? And if so, why just Amazon? Um, well, yeah, it is the only one at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. To be fair, I do find Amazon literally very easy to use. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Very easy to use, very easy to, easy to, sorry, to kind of edit and format your work and yeah, just yeah. kind of, it's a very quick process as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. In the years I've kind of, um, over the years I've, uh, I have approached um, independent publishers, mm-hmm. um, but I just feel like, uh, you know, with the independent publishers, sometimes they may want to just, you know, take your work and tweet your work and kind of, you know, kind of change the message that yeah. you're trying to put out there. And yeah. also, again, you know, a lot of uh, publishers also may, um, you know, obviously they may reject your work as well because I have approached a lot of publishers in the past and they're like, well, yeah, this is a lovely book, Winnie, but it isn't what we're looking for right now. Yeah. And I do feel like it's something that should be out there right now that people need to hear this message because a lot of my books carry a message of situations that need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't get me wrong, I do write about, you know, other stuff. I write um, about romance and like sci-fi and uh-huh. different kinds of things. But I just felt that with the self-publishing, obviously, you know, it would be like my own kind of platform to like push out what I wanted to push out at that particular time and promote yeah. it in the way I wanted to promote it. Yeah. Basically. But my aim is basically um, to focus on young people coming up. I mean, the... Um, The book that I've just written, Ali's Cats, that's kind of, it ranges from about, I'd probably say about 11 to 12 years old up to, you know, whatever age. So 12 plus, basically. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do feel anyone 12 years and older can relate to it. So it's for kids, young people and adults, really. Yeah. Um, What what has been the biggest hurdle that you face while self-publishing? Because I know a lot of people, you know, they they talk about being able to actually uh, get their book out there to um, get it seen and noticed. What's what's the biggest hurdle that you found in publishing your book? um, The biggest hurdle, I would say, is um, I would say marketing. Mm -hmm. With marketing, you kind of get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to really dedicate the time you know, putting a good few hours each day or every other day, just kind of promoting mm-hmm. um, your book. And literally, if you know, if I had a, a, literally, a, a literary agent, yeah. someone that wore that for me, then, you know, great. But I do feel that even if I did have one, mm-hmm. I would have be on their case all the time. Like, you know, so, you know, which, which market are we focusing on today? Like, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I would literally be doing that all myself anyway. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not, I suppose I can invest the time to do that. I don't mind doing it. It's something that I don't mind doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know 
some people may not feel that they want to kind of do that marketing process. Yeah. You know, and, and what I'll, I'll just write the book and just that's it. I've written a book. I don't I don't want to do any more. Yeah. And what are the best ways you found to market your books? Um I find basically to start with friends and family. Um, start with the people around you who, um, you know, you kind of, not only, you know, you kind of admire and um, admire them and you want their support. It's kind of, uh, I would say with marketing, definitely start with the people around you. Promote your book to the people around you, friends, family, social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and just kind of like, you know, each one, teach one, each one, tell another. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's kind of how it's worked for me, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Recently, I kind of bumped into an old friend of mine uh, who I haven't seen in over 20 years. Um, wow. He's now uh, um, he's now a uh, headmaster at a school, private school in London, South London. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He spent many years um, over in the East in Egypt teaching. Yeah. Uh, and he recently wrote my book. Wow, Winnie, I can't believe I haven't seen you in years. You've written a book. Um, let me read it. I have to read it. So he jumped on Amazon, bought it, read yeah. it in one night. And oh, yes. he was over-inspired with it. And he said that, you know, potentially I would like you to come down to London. Mm-hmm. I'd like to interview with the kids and like to do a review on your book with the children that I'm teaching. Oh, so, nice. yeah, I mean, just kind of little things like that. I mean, and... Also with the uh, the young um, the Spark Young Writers team that I work with um, oh, yeah. voluntarily, um, again kind of pushing it out and promoting it that way um, through the work I do with young kids. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, I do feel if you've got the time and effort to promote your book um, yourself, it's it's worthwhile because you kind of you see everything happening and flourishing kind of from scratch. You know, I approach mm-hmm. different libraries. Mm-hmm. I got my book the libraries um you can go to the library and get you know take it out loan it out yeah, yeah um and when i work with um sorry i work with a company called uh writing west midlands mm-hmm. and they're running um a young writers group it's called spark young writers mm-hmm. so every saturday of the month it's running for about a year um mm-hmm. we'll be based um myself and another professional writer will be based at um Birmingham Central Library and we basically teach um, young kids how to write creatively um, mm-hmm. aged um, they're aged between 8 and 17 mm. so obviously my uh, my book is in that library and also um, I'll be kind of using it as um, you know kind of like a prop to kind of uh, get the kids brains um, ticking and get yeah. their imagination going yeah yeah it's a so, deal. Do you have any suggestions for upcoming writers to become better writers? I know you've been writing for well over, um, well, since she was, I think it was eight, you said you was, or six? Yeah, well, yeah, um, six to eight. Obviously, you know, obviously at age six and eight, the grammar and the punctuation wasn't quite there, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I was yeah. writing what I what I could write. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, advice, tips to young writers coming up. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, read, read other books, um, be inspired by other books, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of learn about how to put together plots and, you know, punctuation, grammar. By reading other books, you can kind of get that extra little piece of education that you need around actually yeah. writing. Um, mm-hmm. And also um, just literally write the main message I would say is basically just write because a lot of the time people sit around talking about Mm -hmm. experiences that they've gone through um, and hurdles that they've had to jump. And, you know, I had a situation in my life where, you know, I almost died, but, you know, I spent eight months in hospital, but now I'm here to tell the story, Mm -hmm. you know, put it in writing, um, Mm -hmm. get it down on paper, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, just kind of start to write because the thing is I do find writing to be quite magical. You know, it's a a beautiful thing to me because I will have a little idea, Mm -hmm. like a little light bulb idea. And I've literally wrote a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And then I find that as I start to write that paragraph, then turns into a page and turns into three A4 pages, Mm -hmm. four A4 
years. And before I know it, I've literally drafted at least a quarter or half of a book. So mm. if you have like a natural ability or you feel you might not even have a natural ability, you just have an idea, just get it on paper. Mm-hmm. You know what? People put things on paper and it's, you know, it's scuffed to the back of the drawer or the cupboard or under the bed. Mm-hmm. Years later, you'll find it and you'll think, oh, yeah, I remember that. I was actually going to write a book or try and write a book. Yeah. You know, just write or just type, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it just kind of comes naturally, you know. For me, it does come very, very naturally. Yeah. Um, and it becomes, it, I just have kind of gained a love for writing because it's like, you like to build up the suspense and the mystery, like in mm. and kind of leave everything with an opening as to what's going to happen next. So you feel like you've got an obligation to finish that book. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So just be creative and just play around with things really. And just, yeah. just write. Um, and I feel like the rest will come. Yeah. That leads me on very well to the next question, actually, because um, you mentioned about reading quite a lot of different books. What are the top three books that have made the most impact on your life and why? Wow. Top three. Yeah. Right. Well, I can say definitely one that will always stay with me is um, The Alchemist. I don't know if you've read The Alchemist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, by, uh, is it Paul? I can never pronounce his surname. <laughs> I think yeah. It's Cleo. Um, Cleo or something like that. Cleo. Yeah, basically, I think it's Paul Cahello or something like that. The Alchemist, brilliant book. Yeah. I read that book back in um, 1998. Yeah. And that book, I literally, I remember reading that book about six times, beginning to end. Wow. And yeah. that book has always inspired me. Anytime I'd, anytime I'd be catching a plane or jumping on a flight, yeah. if I read any book, it's that book. And I know I've read it already, but it just takes me through the flight. I just want nice. to keep it. Yeah. Um, because it's, uh, again, it's imaginative. It's like, you know, the world is my oyster. I can go anywhere. I can do yeah. anything. Yeah. Experience anything. I can, you know, you want to kind of delve into the mysteries of the world and, you know, what lies beyond that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of, you know, where my mind is, that's how I like to write, you know, yeah, I like yeah. to kind of, I'm a very spiritual person naturally. So I like to kind of step into other realms and discover this and what's out there, what's beyond the stars, etc. You know, yeah. the world's your oyster, play with it, you know, use yeah. your imagination. Yeah, def- definitely help you um, reach your goals and your dreams, definitely with that book. What, what are yeah. the other two books that, that have inspired you? Right, other two books, um, Funnily enough, um, there was one book that I loved to read at um, when I was at school. Now, I think I was quite young when I'm, I think it was literally the very first book I'd ever read. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was called um, Wednesday Cried. Okay. And it was actually about, I'm a lover of cats. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this book was actually about cats. I didn't have any cats back then. I think I was at... Um, I think it was at junior school, actually, I got this book mm-hmm. out of the library and it was called Wednesday Cried. And it was about seven cats and they're all named like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they used to basically just get up to mischief. Um, yeah. And I think Wednesday got, um, they all used to hang around together and Wednesday got lost. Mm-hmm. She basically went into the fishmongers mm-hmm. and got locked in there for a few nights because <laughs> she mm-hmm. was go in there and kind of eat all the fish or the other <laughs> yeah. and she literally when they found her uh, she just couldn't stop crying but each cat had their own different personality mm-hmm. um, one was cheeky one was funny one was grumpy a little bit like the seven dwarfs but that to me even though it was a very small and short story mm-hmm. it's something that stayed with me because there was like a very clear message um, in the story um, again I suppose uh, the message in that story was uh, basically kind of, I suppose it was about discipline because the cats were disciplined. They had to stay together. But Wednesday obviously, you know, went against the grain and she went and did her own thing and she learned from it. Um, But as a child at that age, it's something that stayed with me and kind of taught me a little message because I'm um, a young sibling of 12. So Mm -hmm. I have, there's 12 of us basically, oh, wow. same parents. I'm the youngest. Yeah. And I've always been quite close to my brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. And I kind of read that book and I thought, 
oh, well, maybe I should always like stay with my brothers and sisters because if I wonder, I, I'm going to get lost. It's not going to be very good. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that book, um, it did stay with me. And um, they, it's not, you know, I don't think it's in production anymore. I don't think you can buy it. It took me ages to Google it um, a few months ago and actually find it online, but it's no longer available. But yeah, um, so that's kind of stayed with me, that book. Mm-hmm. Um, and any other books? Let me see. Um, I actually don't have, I don't feel I could give you a third one. Okay. Because all the other books have just been quite neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've never been to any, been into like Harry Potter or anything like that. Or mm-hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> so, Winnie, if you could tell your younger self anything, what would it be? If I could tell my younger self anything, what would yeah. it be? It would be. Okay, so I'm turning around, I'm looking down, I'm looking at my 10-year-old self. Yes. It would be, you know, follow your heart, mm-hmm. follow your dreams, motivate yourself. I find it very important not to look to others to motivate you. Try and self-motivate. Mm-hmm. You know, it, obviously, it's good depending on what situation you're in. You know, sometimes you do feel like you need to be motivated by someone, obviously, mm-hmm. but Try and keep that motivation going yourself, self-motivate yourself, push yourself. I find that by doing that, it gives me determination. Yeah. Um, keep going and keep going and just, you know, cross every bridge, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, not be um, not be easily influenced as, as well. You know, mm-hmm. follow your own heart, follow your own mind. You know, your path isn't the same as Sally's path next to you, Very you true. know. Yeah, just um, follow your heart, follow that good feeling, that, sorry, that gut feeling, that mm-hmm. little voice in your head. Uh, you know, I do feel that we're all here for a purpose. You know, everybody has their own natural gifts. Mm-hmm. Tap into that, you know, you know, embrace it, find out more about it. You know, I do see nowadays it's nice to see a lot of people actually, you know, saying, oh, well, I'm in a nine to five job. Um, I don't really like doing what I'm doing. It pays the bills. But what I really want to do, what my real passion is, is this. You know, I'm not saying give up your job and go and do it. But, yeah. you know, at least try and build on it as a hobby. And hopefully one day, you know, it will happen. The magic will happen. Yeah, and, yeah. And because I do believe that, you know, life is for living and where, you know, we should, uh, we should, you know, just kind of work to live and not live to work, basically. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, a message to myself would be follow your dreams, follow your heart, um, always kind of. And the, um, you know, the helping hand that you're looking for is at the end of your arm, you know, because I've learned to kind of get the job done and do things myself rather yeah. than relying on people. And you said you was going to yeah. do this for me, but you haven't done it yet, you know, just uh, just push through. Just uh, you never know. You could do a better job than that person you're waiting around on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've just anything that I've want that I've wanted in life. I've just gone out and got it myself, basically. Because yeah, that's very good. Having a determination is uh, is definitely key. You know, having the resilience as well, um, just pushing through, just pushing through. Um, so yeah. Winnie, what is the vision of Winnie Alexander? and uh, what gets you the most excited about the years coming, the years ahead? The years come in the years ahead. Um, well, um, let's see. At the moment, when it comes to writing, um, I literally have about 21 books. I'm looking at them now. Yeah. <laughs> I've literally got about 21 books that are drafted and right. need to be finished, and I need wow. to get them published and done. Like, um, it's like one morning I wake up, I have a new idea for this book. I have a yeah. new idea for that book. And I just keep getting the ideas down on papers. The chapters are building. I yeah. just need to get them all finished. And it's kind of like, I feel that's something that I need to do. But I know that once I've written those and they're done, more books will come. The ideas will keep coming because there's yeah. so much going on in the world, you know. Mm-hmm. And every time I kind of, you know, kind of watch the news or see other things happening in, in the world and yeah. things that we're having to, situations that we're having to, you know, be faced with every day, a new mm-hmm. idea, you know, how can, we res- how can we resolve this? You know, mm-hmm. we're aiming for, uh, for world peace. I'm a very optimistic person. So, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I mean, and the children as well. In the future, I want to see 
the next generation kind of, you know, helping the planet. And it's happening yeah. already. It's happening already because, you know, we're surrounded by a lot of children, you know, walking around, you know, um, they're mature before their age. Like, you know, they're like old people in little people's bodies, you know, mm. they're very wise, mm. a lot of them, these young ones. Yeah. You know, it's happening already. You know, we're learning from them already. But my hope for the future is that they take the reins, you know, and really kind of put things right, you know, mm. and kind mm. of move into politics and kind of change, like, you know, world leaders. I want to see, like, our children, like, being groomed to, like, world leaders and get the world right, get the planet right. Yeah. You know, stop destroying the planet, you know, get on with the green peace and just sort things out, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would inspire young people nowadays if, they're, if they love writing, you know, put pen to paper and write about something that you care about, something that you're concerned about, like climate change, mm. you know, like start putting the ideas down on paper from now because the thing is when when kids are young and they've got that fresh kind of you know that fresh mind and mm. um, they've not been contaminated as yet by the world should we say <laughs> as True. I know. True. Um, True. get it on paper now um, mm. because the thing is like with myself when I used to write short stories when I was younger obviously you get to a certain age where you know you have kids things change you become an adult life becomes a lot more you know, difficult, there's pressures there and you kind of forget about things like writing. Yeah, um, yeah. And then later on when you kind of become a little bit more content where you are in your life, you might go back and think, okay, oh, I remember writing this when I was seven years or when I was 17 years old, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at a place now where I can complete this. I've got more knowledge now. I can finish this book. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so focus, um, we need to focus on on the young people and striving them forward and um, yeah, helping them to express themselves in a positive way, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's through writing or through, through music. Yeah. I've seen a lot of, you know, young kids coming up, whether it's rap or R and B soul, a lot of the music that is coming through now, it's, it's with a positive message, you yeah. know, yeah. Not all, you know, crime and, and, you know, girls and alcohol and whatever, Mm. A lot of it is, is positive lyrics, you know, mm. whatever way you want to get that message out there, get that message out there. So, yeah. yeah. That sounds excellent. So finally, Winnie, where can people connect with you? Social media, website, what's your website URL, your social media links? Right. So my social media links. Okay. So you can find me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, if you just type in Winnie Alexander, that's W Y double N I E Alexander. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also go, get me on, let's see, Instagram. Um, so you can get me on Instagram if you type in lovely nine. So that's basically L U V L E E on, sorry, L U V underscore L E E nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I'm on a, Instagram on there and also you can also get me on Instagram on um, author of manifestation so you can get me on author of manifestation on Instagram or you can get me on author of manifestation dot wordpress dot com um, yeah so I've kind of author of manifestation I kind of came up with that name as the umbrella to cover all of my books basically uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that is me, the author of Manifestation. Whatever I put down on paper, I don't just want you to kind of read it and put it down. I want you to take something away from it. You yeah. know, I want you to manifest something out of it. Yeah. You know, like I said with the trophy, trophy hunting, Ali's mm -hmm. Cats and the Mythical Journey. By the time you read that book, at the end of that book, um, you know, you will want to hopefully go out, whether you protest, whether mm -hmm. you start up some campaigning mm -hmm. against killing of wild animals hopefully you know you'll be compelled and inspired to do that you'll take something away from it you know mm -hmm. um and it's not just uh trophy hunting it's also kind of refers to um neglecting you know our everyday pets you know mm -hmm. sometimes we're walking down the road and we're seeing stray dogs we're seeing stray cats you know and i'm a i'm a very empathetic person you know mm -hmm. i will kind of put myself in their shoes and you know, I've, you, you see like cats abandoned and, you know, in the park and they're having kittens and people just think, you know, 
it's okay to do that. And it's not, you know, mm -hmm. we're all living beings. We all deserve to have some kind of good quality of life, mm -hmm. you know, animal or non-animal. We should, you know, and, you know, it's the same, you know, with babies, you know, women are actually struggling and dumping babies in plastic bags in, in bins outside. It's, it's, you know, it's terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. So all these little things that are happening around me that I see and disturb my spirit, mm -hmm. I have to, on paper I have to mm. you know people need to yeah, yeah people need yeah. to recognize what's going on and let's make change yeah well Winnie Alexander I do thank you very much for your time your wisdom your inspiration to all writers out there and uh, we do thank you very much is there any last words that you want to say um yeah well thank you for having me yeah. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a pleasure and yeah. um you know I hope that we can we can share some uh some gems in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, my my message to everyone out there, just follow your heart, follow your dreams, don't give up, you know? Um, stay creative, stay imaginative and express yourself. Um, yeah, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because there's no such word as can't. You can mm. do it. You mm. know, manifest your dreams, it can be done. Mm. So mm. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, I'm your host, Daryl James. This has been a Business Marketing Finance podcast. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now.